Dr. Kristen Camella is the Chief Science Officer of the U.S. Stem Cell Clinic. She's a world-renowned expert on regenerative medicine with a focus on adipose, which is fat-derived stem cells. She was named number 24 on Terrapin's list of the top 50 global stem cell influencers and number one on the Academy of Regenerative Practices list of top, stem, top 10 stem cell innovators. Most recently, Dr. Camella made the list of top 50 functional and integrative medical doctors and scientists in the country by DrAxe.com, which is one of the most visited natural health websites in the world. She has more than a dozen peer-reviewed publications indexed on PubMed in the field of regenerative medicine. Dr. Kamala, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So excited to share uh, some of our research from the past two decades to your crowd. I'm excited too. And we were fortunate enough to get to hang out a few days ago here at the at Biohackers Health and Fitness and get on the ARX machine and use some of the technology that you guys here have here. Um, how did you get into biohacking and stem cells? Give us a little bit of your background. Yep. So uh, my degrees are actually in uh, chemical engineering, both a bachelor's and master's, and I have a PhD in stem cell biology. Uh, in the late 90s, I started studying stem cells, in particular um, from cord blood, and uh, we were looking at protein expression of these cells and isolating the cells using something called nanomagnets, uh, little tiny magnets, and then you can separate cells based on how they express different proteins. Um, after I finished graduate work at Ohio State, I went to a startup company called Osiris Therapeutics, and I was focused on using bone marrow derived cells for knee injuries, more specifically meniscal tears. And we did some of the world's first animal studies demonstrating that we could in fact regrow new meniscal tissue using the stem cells from bone marrow. Uh, after that, I had an opportunity to work with an amazing team at Tulane University uh, where I supervised the laboratory for growing mesenchymal stem cells from bone marrow uh, for spinal cord injury. Um, and about 14 or so years ago, I moved to Florida and joined the company that I'm involved with now, which is called U.S. Stem Cell. And uh, we have focused on a variety of different indications uh, using stem cells, and um, probably the last seven or eight years have really honed in on stem cells from the fat tissue. Nice. So you mentioned mesenchymal stem cells and adipose stem cells, and there's uh, a lot of confusion in the stem cell industry and some misinformation, mm -hmm. which you were alluding to on Friday. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit of, for the listeners, stem cell 101, where we're at with the science, what type of stem cells are most effective for different applications, and kind of help us get up to speed with where you're at now? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think probably easiest to take kind of a global approach first on the concept of regenerative medicine uh, is that every single one of us has the opportunity and the ability to heal. It's really kind of a magnificent machine that we've been given, and, and no man-made machine comes even close uh, to this machine that is our human body. And uh, every single day, there are stem cells in our body that are responsible for maintaining and healing tissue. So to give you an example, if you got a cut on your arm, stem cells would naturally home to that area and begin to repair that tissue. This process is constantly going on inside our body. So the idea of regenerative medicine is to harness this technology inside of us and use it in places that we may need additional help. Uh, so maybe you have something that's become chronic, an injury that's um, just not healing, or maybe you're suffering from a degenerative disease, and we can take stem cells where they may lie in storage inside you and put extra stem cells where you need help. Uh, so the, the most obvious indication that we treat is in orthopedics. So if a patient has an issue, say, with arthritis, over years the, the cartilage starts to wear down, wear and tear on the joints, we can introduce stem cells directly into that joint to help repair the damage as well as reduce inflammation. Um, you can also use stem cells in many different degenerative diseases. So this could be things like your heart, your lungs, um, you know, think diabetes, uh, you know, kidney, liver, uh, any sort of organ that has to do with damaged tissue. Um, and then we also apply stem cells to neurological conditions, the brain. 
Uh, so think Parkinson's. Um, Which my dad has. Yes, yes, ALS. You know, all of these have to do with two things, inflammation and damaged tissue. So stem cells are responsible for reducing inflammation, and they are also responsible for repairing and creating new tissue. Now, the source of stem cells can vary. There are a lot of different places that we can get stem cells. And in fact, every single tissue inside your body has stem cells. If you didn't have stem cells in your body, you would die in about an hour because the tissues would exhaust and there would be nothing there to maintain and repair that tissue and keep it going. Um, so when we look inside the body, we have the opportunity to isolate stem cells essentially from any source of tissue. So bone marrow, skin even, teeth, um, and uh, certainly fat tissue. So in our body, one of the most plentiful sources known currently is fat. We can get about 500 times more stem cells from fat than any other source of tissue inside your body. So uh, this is great news because as Americans, we tend to have a lot of fat to go around. So it's America's natural resource. Um, and I always tell people not to feel bad if they're carrying a little extra fat. They can just tell their friends it's that they're banking advantage. extra stem cells. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's great. So tons of applications. We have it with degenerative conditions, pain and things like that, where maybe people would have turned to a knee replacement or I'm not sure if there's applications in hip replacement, mm -hmm. but some of these joints, you now can apply stem cells and have the body mm -hmm. heal mm -hmm. the same joint. You don't have to go through an invasive surgery. Yeah, correct? That, that's a, exactly it. And so we're going to start to see this shift in medicine. Regenerative medicine and stem cell therapy is a new paradigm of health. It's going to change the way people address a lot of different indications. And so maybe you won't necessarily need that surgery that would have been previously standard of care. Um, in addition, it may change the need for certain medications. And I think, uh, think opiate epidemic, you know, instead of masking the symptom, which is the pain, get to the root cause, address the underlying condition, address the inflammation, repair the tissue, and then you don't need to address a symptom, which would be pain. Right. And then, so neurodegenerative disorders, you were talking about a procedure of getting it into, was it the cerebrospinal fluid? Mm -hmm. And then that was actually getting it into the brain mm -hmm. and allowing people to reverse some of those things? Yeah. Yeah. So we actually have published the world's largest safety study. Um, and part of that safety study was applying the cells in a method called intrathecal. And what this means is we inject into the lower portion of the spine, into the cerebrospinal fluid, which allows the cells to more easily cross the blood brain barrier. And uh, this can then address inflammation in the brain, damage in the brain, um, and potentially help to regrow damaged tissue. And are you seeing, if you were to do that with someone who didn't have a neurodegenerative disorder, are you seeing improved cognition, heightened IQ scores? How does this affect intelligence and aging? Yeah, so nobody really knows the answer to that. That's kind of a newer space. There's only been a handful of patients that have done an intrathecal injection uh, for getting the cells into the brain kind of prophylactically. Um, and one of those is actually a famous biohacker, Dave Asprey. And so he did speak of this um, on one of his podcasts. And actually, he did a live stream from when he was at our clinic receiving the stem cells for his brain. We all have damage in our tissues, including our brain. So even if there's not something specifically wrong, you're still gonna have uh, inflammation and or damage in your brain. It's just kind of the nature of being human. If you go outside and you breathe the air, you're going to get inflammation. Um, that's just how our system works. And inflammation isn't necessarily all bad. It's when we get into a chronic inflamed state. Um, so whether or not it's appropriate or what kind of gains you could see from doing kind of a prophylactic injection specifically, specifically to the brain, nobody knows for sure. But anecdotally, what these patients have reported is a little bit less brain fog. Um, we actually had a practitioner who was preparing to, to reboard, take their exam. So they decided to do an injection for the brain uh, prior to reboarding to kind of help with their, their memory. Mm -hmm. That's probably better than mega dosing Adderall. 
<laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. So this is a much more natural approach. These are your own cells. Um, these are the cells that are naturally circulating in you, so you're placing additional cells into circulation. Um, so for me personally, I actually will use the cells systemically. So typically about six to 12, every six to 12 months, I will do an IV of my own cells. Um, and the idea is this kind of anti-aging concept, bring down your inflammation. So inflammation is what ages us. It causes our telomeres to shorten, and telomeres really determine our age. If you can keep your telomeres longer for a longer period of time, you live longer. So by reducing your inflammation, inflammation in any given moment, you're essentially keeping your telomeres longer. Right. It, it's, it's very exciting. And um, I, would you consider that systemic intravenous approach of stem cells to be the gold standard? Or if, if someone wanted to get the most benefits from stem cells possible and money wasn't an issue mm -hmm. and they came to, what would you recommend? Um, so, you know, I think most people who present to us have something going on. They come okay. to us for a specific reason. You know, they have a damaged knee or they have arthritis or they've got a disease that they're trying to overcome or, you know, get their body back to functioning normally. Um, I would say that it's a smaller portion of patients that come to us for more that kind of anti-aging. Um, so as a health seeker and a biohacker myself, um, I do use it in that way. But I also use the stem cells if anything goes wrong. So as an example, um, you know, I, I like to work out a lot. So sometimes I tweak my knee or I, you know, do shoulder. I, I injured my piriformis. So or the I tune hurt. of like 25 classes a week, you <laughs> yes, mentioned that yes. you did, <laughs> which I is do. like amazing. I tend to be fanatical with it. Um, I'm very much type A and, you know, I'm, I'm all in, you know, yeah, and uh, I love it. I love, I love working out. Um, you know, it's, it's both for physical and mental for me. Um, so I do a lot of yoga in addition and, uh, you know, a lot of weights and HIIT training balances um, things out. That's right. That's right. And so, you know, sometimes I tweak a joint or I get a little injury. And so, of course, I will use my stem cells in that type of way. Um, so I've injected knees, shoulders, wrists, piriformis. Um, and I've also done a vaginal wall injection. So I'm a mother of two. My, my babies are not babies anymore. They're teenagers. But um, after having had uh, two children, I had urinary incontinence. So I would frequently... Just very common. It's very common. Uh, a lot of women have it. And so if I would do a jumping jack or sneeze, I would pee my pants. Um, and as somebody who likes to go to the gym, that's not very comfortable. Uh, uh, so um, we did injections on the anterior vaginal wall to help strengthen the muscle and to help improve the quality of the valve. Um, so I'm happy to report that I no longer pee my pants. Um, <laughs> but in addition, as we age, um, and I'm a female in her 40s, and as we age, um, we've got hormone shifting and our blood supply starts to shut down. Um, so, you know, as a female, um, you start to have issues with lubrication um, and then you start to have issues with orgasms. And so by introducing the stem cells, it can help to improve the blood supply there. And with more blood supply, this means better orgasms as well as um, better lubrication. And so this is a very natural approach um, to helping improve your sex life. And I'm happy to report that it worked. And I think my husband would report the same. <laughs> right. It's, I mean, it's so exciting, especially like as we're living longer, if we don't want to get into a situation where we're living to 150, but we haven't been sexually active for the last hundred years. That's right. Yeah. And, um, I was introduced to this concept of the vaginal wall injection. Use, and it was um, Dr. Alicia Bright at Bright Healing Center up mm -hmm. in West Palm. She was talking about the O shot, which yes. is mm -hmm. PRP or platelet-rich plasma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And clinically, what are you seeing? How does how do stem cells compare to PRP mm -hmm. for that purpose of? sexual arousal and function. Yes, absolutely. So platelet-rich plasma is a part of regenerative medicine. PRP does not have stem cells in it. It comes from your peripheral blood. Um, so the idea is you can take a small sample of blood and then you can centrifuge or spin the blood and then separate based on density. And the stuff that comes to the top is gonna to be yellow in color. That's the serum. Inside that serum, you're gonna have platelets and platelets are really magnificent. They are um, non-living inside your body. So they don't have a nucleus. And what they will do is they're a little bit like first responders. So whenever you have an injury, platelets are the first one to get there. The first thing they do is they stop you from bleeding out. So they create that clotting mechanism. 
The second thing the platelets will do is start commanding everyone in the area what to do. Uh, so they will tell the white blood cells to get in there and create some inflammation and get make sure, <laughs> yeah, make sure no bacteria survive and that you don't get infection. Um, they will then tell the stem cells to start repairing and go to work. When the stem cells come, they tell the white blood cells to quiet down. Okay, that's enough inflammation, quiet down. Um, and sometimes our bodies over respond. We get too much inflammation, in particular when you start thinking about diet um, and other toxic exposure. You know, maybe your omega 6s are too high and your omega 3s are not high enough. Mold exposure. Mold exposure. You Some know, of all of these things start yeah. to create over inflammation in the body. Um, so the stem cell's responsibility is to quiet that down. The next thing the stem cells will do is start to repair and create new tissue before it moves into scar tissue. So hopefully you stay in this regenerative stage long enough. So when you have platelet-rich plasma as part of the concoction, you're putting additional platelets and growth factors into the area, it's like applying fertilizer to your seed. Um, so you can use it in that way to help stimulate this healing cascade. If you have a chronic situation, so say you've got osteoarthritis, it's chronic, it's going to be a stem cell poor environment. It's going to be different than, say, an acute cut or an acute injury, which is going to be a stem cell rich environment. So if you apply PRP to a chronic situation, it would be like putting fertilizer but forgetting to plant the seed. Um, so PRP is going to be most effective in things that are acute um, and also where you're trying to stimulate some additional blood supply, a little bit of angiogenesis, some growth factors, you know, any, anywhere that you're kind of kicking up a little bit of that immune response. So this is why it can be successful in a vaginal shot or a penis shot, um, but you're gonna really get your best results when you then combine with stem cells. You can also use PRP as anti-inflammatory. Uh, so uh, essentially anywhere that you have an injury, a cut, a wound, um, your sinuses, if you have inflamed sinuses, you could spritz some PRP up your nose. Um, it works very nicely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so huge applications here. And you mentioned some things that I, I've wondered if there were genetic or environmental conditions that predispose certain individuals to lower stem cell counts mm -hmm. or um, say emotional or biological stress high EMF environment, heavy metal exposure, mm -hmm. um, poor diet, mm -hmm. sedentary lifestyle. Have you identified anything, um, variations in glutathione production mm -hmm. genetically or things like that, that you see like those people that have these things typically need stem cells or are lower in platelets and benefit the most from these applications? Mm -hmm. So uh, with stem cells and specifically the numbers that we can get from patients, uh, we have not necessarily noticed specific trends when it comes to uh, race or nationality or we'll call it genetic makeup um, and age. It doesn't seem to matter. I have successfully gotten huge amounts of stem cells off of 90-something-year-olds and then had 20-year-olds when I couldn't get any. The deciding factor, and I can almost always tell you when we receive a sample of fat, uh, seems to be more toxic exposure. Mm. Think cigarettes, alcohol, um, these things just make the stem cells terrible. They will not grow. And when we receive a sample of fat tissue from somebody who is a smoker, we can tell. The fat is literally gray colored, and their stem cells will not grow as well as somebody who is a non-smoker. Um, so it's more these environmental toxins that seem to affect the quality or the quantity of stem cells that we can get, and less some of the other factors, or we certainly can't seem to, to discover trends. Now, the other thing is I would encourage your listeners to not hold on to this concept of being genetically wrong or you know, genetically held back. Because everything ha is here for a reason. It has Absolutely. or has some advantage. Y yes, yes. You're not here by mistake. On the day that you were being formed, your parents were there, and um, there were hundreds of millions of people fighting for your spot, and you won. It was not a mistake. You were the best out of hundreds of millions. I mean, we're talking Olympic style. You were the best. And so I would encourage everyone to kind of hold on to that, that they were genetically superior to hundreds of millions of others. Um, and that allowed them to come forward. And remember that your gene expression 
is more important. And this has to do with the billions of bacteria, your microbiome, that are in contact with your genes that cause certain expression. So don't allow yourself in your mind to be limited by your genes. That's huge. What, what type of people are also benefiting from this? Are you seeing applications in, we mentioned mold exposure, mm -hmm. Lyme disease, mm -hmm. um, some of these situations where maybe you know natural killer cells are lower. Mm -hmm. is, is a stem cell injection going to help with things like that? Yeah, so all of these have many, you know, two things in common, inflammation and damaged tissue, and stem cells can help with both. Um, so the cause of it can be somewhat irrelevant. And so a lot of times patients will come in and say, well, you know, my knee hurts. Don't you need a, a specific MRI so you can see exactly what's wrong with it? No, we need to know that your knee hurts because when we put the stem cells in, they will naturally home to areas of injury and inflammation. Same thing if we were to put the cells systemically, they will naturally home to areas of inflammation. There's actually a famous publication where uh, the patient had an injury on the toe and they did tracking of where the stem cells went and they went to the toe even though they had put them into the vein. Um, so the body knows where it needs it most. So you may come into the clinic to meet one of the practitioners and say, um, you, know, what, what, uh, you know, what you have wrong, you have an idea in your head, like, oh, I've got this wrong, this is what I wanna address. When we put the stem cells in, they may have a different idea and they decide where you need it the most. So just because you came in thinking that you wanna have your heart treated, uh, your lungs may be having a trouble and the cells go there. It's very important because I've noticed a trend in biohacking, which is in many ways, people are trying to micromanage their health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy for us to assume that we know what's best for us. Mm -hmm. And with this, we're moving away from, in some cases, the traditional conventional medicine paradigm of, you know, cut it open and swap it out, right. where we're now applying something from within the body mm -hmm. in a way where we're allowing those stem cells to apply the wisdom to where the body needs it, mm -hmm. which is really exciting and cool. Yeah, and I think you know we're really just scratching the surface about what we know about our systems. And we, of course we know a lot of things about the system, but this is a very complex machine, an amazing machine. And so sometimes we have to just quiet down our mind and allow the body do, to do what it's gonna do. And we can learn so much more if we just shut out that kind of mind noise and allow the body to heal and to do what it's supposed to do. How do you feel after you do, I think you said it's an annual mm -hmm, systemic mm -hmm. IV. Mm -hmm. How do you feel after that? Um, so this can vary. Uh, I find that when I've got something going on, like if I have maybe a viral, you know, infection or something, um, I will actually run a low-grade fever. And this is the immunomodulatory response. Your body kind of kicks up that immune response because you need it. Um, so it, it's triggering that, okay, we're, we're going to fight. We're going to, you know, do something and make sure that we're running smoothly and healthy. If I don't really have anything going on, um, I'll notice that I get increased energy. I notice that I have increased what's called angiogenesis, blood blood vessel supply, mm -hmm. so my skin quality will improve. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I have increased libido as well. Mm -hmm. All solid benefits. How does it affect your workouts and your, your 25 classes a yeah, week? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I typically like to do beast mode when I work out, um, mm -hmm. you know, just really kick it up a notch. And uh, I also teach classes uh, for people who come in, you know, hit training, I teach spinning, I teach yoga. Um, and so whenever I tell my class I've gotten a stem cell injection, they're very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> they're tapping out before you even start. Oh, that's great. Um, what, are, what are some of the, the most commonly held misconceptions around stem cells? Mm. Because there's, it's hard to differentiate why certain information is being uh, mm -hmm. purported and whether or not there's self-interest involved. Um, Share with us some of the things that you've heard that are just not true regarding stem cells. Yeah, you know, cells. I think one of the uh, biggest misconceptions is that people think they have to leave the country to get stem cell treatments, and this is just not true. We are doing these procedures here in the United States, um, and we use your own stem cells. Uh, this is my preferred source. I would rather use my own cells. Uh, there are other uh, tissue bank products that will come from birth tissue, uh, so this would include things like cord blood, 
or uh, placental or Wharton's jelly. Um, mm -hmm. So these are more products that are produced in a laboratory. And in order to stay compliant with the current regulations inside the United States, these products have to be acellular in nature, have no living cells. Um, so those are a different kind of product. They may still help with an immunomodulatory response and help to promote healing in the body. So they're not necessarily a bad thing, but they're not what I prefer for me personally. Um, the reason is that I want to use my cells inside my body. I don't want to use somebody else's cells. So think about when you have uh, an aloe graft, uh, aloe being somebody else's, um, whether it be you know blood work or you know blood from somebody else or an organ for somebody else. Those always have to be disease screened. And when we say that something is disease screened, they are disease screened for what we currently know about. Mm -hmm. And every decade or so, we learn about new diseases, new viruses. I'm certainly old enough to remember when we began disease screening for HIV. And so for me, especially since I'm a very healthy person, I don't necessarily want to use tissue from somebody else. And why not use my own cells? It just makes perfect sense. The other thing to keep in mind is that using younger cells does not necessarily mean a better response clinically in you because you are limited by the age of your own tissues and your own cells. So when you inject stem cells or platelet-rich plasma, what you're trying to do is stimulate your own healing cascade. So the age of the cells circulating in you is the limiting factor. Injecting somebody's younger cells does not make your cells get younger. So um, umbilical cell, cells, stem cells, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. umbilical stem cells versus like your own stem cells. Mm -hmm. There's not an, an enhanced anti-aging effect from using umbilical cells or placental cells. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly no publication comparing the two at this point. So nobody really knows the answer to that. And there's theories surrounding the mechanisms of action for how stem cell therapy or regenerative medicine works inside the body. And one of the theories is that the mechanism of action is an immunomodulatory or paracrine effect. And what that means is that once you inject something in, it sends signals to the rest of your body to come in and start healing. And so the cells that actually come there that are your own are the ones creating the, the clinical effect. And what procedures are you guys applying the most at the U.S. Stem Cell Clinic? What are you finding people come in for most frequently and then come back for? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So one of the most common indications is orthopedics. So this is going to be knees, hips, shoulders, you know, any sort of orthopedics. And it can be acute, like injuries, an ACL, or it could be chronic osteoarthritis. Um, we also are one of the only clinics in the world that is addressing neurological conditions. Um, so a lot of neurological patients come to us. So this is going to be traumatic brain injury, um, ALS, Parkinson's, MS. Um, and then we do systemic. Uh, we do a lot of autoimmune. Um, and the concept of using stem cells for autoimmune is that we can help to reset the immune system. Uh, so by applying the stem cells, it's going to bring down inflammation, and it's going to go to those areas that are damaged. And so it kicks up this kind of heavy immune response to kind of push that big reset button on your body. And do people who have autoimmune conditions or uh, some degree of immune senescence feel worse before they feel better? It can vary. You know, it really depends on what the person is coming in with. So there, there can be this kind of uh, acute fever response, which is typically, you know, 24 to 72 hours. Um, but new tissue formation can take three to six months. It takes a lizard two years to grow back a tail. So we're trying to overcome oftentimes decades worth of damage. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that stem cell therapy is not necessarily a magic bullet. It's not necessarily one treatment and done and you start running marathons, which by the way, if you're running marathons, stop. It's a terrible <laughs> exercise, only when chased, right? <laughs> um, it's very depleting. So, I've never done it. Uh, no, and, and one of my it's best torturous. Had a, had a charity around it and I felt bad. I donated every year, but I'm like, I can't do it, man. No. <laughs> I'm just not built for it. Yeah. Uh, sprint, maybe. Yeah. Like, if you're chasing me, okay, I'll run a little bit further. I've done like, some of the Spartans and some of the Tough <laughs> yes. Mudders and those things but like I cap it around 10 miles. <laughs> right. um, so anyway, you know, this concept that you may have to come back and repeat dose 
uh, is really important in regenerative medicine. You know, you're trying to overcome decades of damage potentially, or a degenerative disease that's been progressive and, and done a lot of damage inside your body. Um, so, you know, allow yourself that opportunity to come back and dose. So we have patients that take a very aggressive approach, and they will typically dose every four to six weeks um, until we can get a handle on, you know, the situation, get the tissue functioning more normally. Um, this is why banking your stem cells is so critical. Uh, we can take a small sample of your fat tissue and then send it to the laboratory and obtain 20 to 25 additional doses. Um, so I've had my stem cells banked for five plus years. So I'm just drawing off of that same bank that I produced five years ago. So the good news about that is I've got my cells from five years ago stored. So they were younger than they were today. Right. Mm -hmm. And does that affect things or is it or does it not matter if your stem cells were five years old or 10 years old because it's determined by the health of your cells today? Yeah. 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 I think that it's more important your age and your health today uh, than the age of the cells banked. But just in case, it's good that I have them banked young, younger. You never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I just spent three weeks at home in Chicago catching up with my parents. I, I moved to Delray Beach, Florida, like last August, and I don't get to see my friends and family as much, obviously, mm -hmm. due to geographical uh, distance. Limitations, yeah. But my dad has Parkinson's. Okay. And I'm very interested in the applications and results you're seeing in neurodegenerative diseases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And does it require more injections? What are the what are the changes you're seeing mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. patients? I'm curious. Yeah, so this really depends on kind of where the patient is in the process. And unfortunately, the kind of patient that typically presents to us is more end stage. They've exhausted everything else, the medications are no longer working, um, and now they've come to us. So I wish that we could get patients earlier on before extensive damages is done, especially in the neurological conditions, because I think we would have better success in preventing the progression of the disease um, and really trying to address the, the root cause instead of masking symptoms. So we have had patients that were wheelchair bound who were able to walk again. We've had patients reduce medications. And oftentimes the medications come with unwanted side effects. So the patients are looking to discontinue those medications. Um, and so then we would work with their practitioners to, to help uh, modify the requirements of their medication if the stem cells are successful for them. Um, but certainly in the neurological cases, uh, I would anticipate that those patients would need repeat dosing. Mm -hmm. Right. And the cases of someone being wheelchair bound and then being able to walk mm -hmm, again, mm -hmm. that's more, they were wheelchair bound due to health issues, not necessarily spinal cord injuries. We have had spinal cord injury patients as well, um, and they start to regain movement. Um, and these patients, we have much better success on an acute injury. Okay. I actually consider it criminal that we don't do a stem cell treatment on every single spinal cord injury patient right at the moment of their injury. I don't know why we're not doing this. We have the technology right now. I don't know what we're waiting for. Um, it's, it's really awful that we don't. Um, and it's certainly what I would do for my children. And by the way, um, my oldest has already gotten stem cell treatments. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did he or she experience... Is it a boy or a girl? Boy, boy. A boy? Yes, yes. What, what did he notice? What did he say about um, it? So we were trying to address acne, okay. and um, it, it worked very nicely. Um, so we've, we've done a combination of things because uh, we certainly did not want to take any of the um, medications that are currently available that yeah, have... Accutane. Accutane. I've heard about yes. so many issues with that. Uh, yeah, too many unwanted side effects there. Um, not worth it. Um, and it's challenging when you have teenagers that don't necessarily want to eat the same food that mom wants to eat. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a, a never ending battle, but I, I think they'll come around. They always come full circle. So I just lead by example, they'll, they'll get there. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's devastating when I, you know, come home and they're just eating like pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> help me help you. <laughs> yeah. I, I can only imagine. I don't have any children of my own yet, but Kumba, my, my <laughs> mini golden doodles, quite picky. My mom started spoiling him by putting wet food in his bowl while oh, he yes. was back in Chicago. You can't go back. And then I put dry food in his bowl. He looked at it for four days. I was like, two days in, I'm like, I'll wait this out. Like yeah. four days, I'm like, my dog's going to die. I'm gonna run to the grocery store to get wet food. It's true. It's <laughs> true. Was, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, um, and I mean, not to mention, we're, I know we're kind of off topic, but not to mention in the schools, the food that the children are given in the schools is just horrifying. 
I mean, I just, I can't even, like, who is in charge of this? And, and we're literally poisoning our children. Yeah, a lot of hospitals, too. Hospitals. Oh, uh, yeah. it's the, like, you're trying to get better, and here they are giving you the worst food on the planet. Free up some beds. <laughs> right. Give them Jell-O. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the jell is awful. But, yeah. yeah, give us a little bit of, a, of, of, a, of an idea of where the regulatory landscape is right now. Mm-hmm. Because my understanding is with... The Bush administration, there were some misunderstandings around stem cells. They thought that it had to do with like, I don't know, a lot of a lot of weird cloning type activities. So all research, as I understand it, Mm -hmm. please correct me if I'm wrong, all research around stem cells was halted. Mm. And did that set us back in comparison to other parts of the world like Germany? Mm -hmm. um, And where are we at today with the regulatory agencies and things? So going back to kind of the Bush era. Um, What Bush said is that there will be no government funding for embryonic stem cells. Um, So it had nothing to do with whether you were allowed to do it or not allowed to do it. It had to do with government funding, and it was specific to embryonic stem cells. So embryonic stem cells are when you bring together the sperm and the egg, so gestation, and uh, they start to form a cluster of cells. We call it an inner cell mass. So around the fifth day, uh, this mass of cells can be collected and then placed into petri dishes, and those are embryonic stem cells. Oftentimes what those come from are in vitro fertilizations that are going to be discarded or not used. Um, so when you are a couple going undergoing in vitro fertilization, you typically will do more than what you need um, and then only implant some of them. So then some of them end up getting discarded if you end up getting pregnant. Um, So that's where you could obtain embryonic stem cells. So what Bush said is the government is not going to fund research associated with embryonic, but they continued to allow grants for adult stem cells. Um, But that was only for a short period of time because then Clinton came in and said, no, we're going to fund, actually it was, I'm sorry, it, because it was second Bush, it was actually Obama who came in and said, no, you know, we're just going to let the people at NIH decide who was going to fund what. So NIH Which is- makes more yeah, sense. <laughs> yeah. Typically where you apply for a grant. NIH is National Institute, Institute of Health. Institute of Health. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a government program where then you apply. Most of that funding, I think it's like 90 some percent of that funding goes to universities. And universities are typically doing animal studies, bench top work, et cetera. So they're not usually doing clinical applications. In other words, that funding and that money does not go to clinics like us to do treatments. Um, So that's gonna be more on your university level animal studies. So uh, we can definitely cure heart failure on rats. We're really good at it because the government funds that I mean, that's the second leading cause of death in America, right? Right, and so that doesn't necessarily translate to what happens on humans, and unfortunately, we don't get funding at the clinic level to do that type of therapy. Um, So Bush did not stop stem cell treatments. It was specific to embryonic, and it was specific to government funding. Okay. So fast forward, um, we started doing treatments in 2001, is when we first treated our first patient. So in order for us to do any sort of clinical treatment, we either have to fund it ourselves or the funding has to come from the end user, the patient. So when you go to the doctor, you either have to pay for your treatment or insurance pays for it. So currently insurance does not pay for these treatments. Um, So the patients have to pay for the treatment, um, which is sad, you know, because this is potentially a life altering, a life saving procedure that can be done for patients. So I think that ultimately we will get there where insurance pays for it. Now, last year in 2018, around March or April, it was actually Palm Sunday to be exact, which is the week before Easter. uh, And uh, the attorneys from DC uh, who helped me out called and said, we have received from the Department of Justice, who are the attorneys that represent the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, uh, what is a draft lawsuit. And the lawsuit reads, the United States of America versus Kristen Camella and the clinic and some of the other entities associated with the stem cell treatments. And it says that the stem cells that exist inside your fat tissue are a drug. And they, as part of this draft lawsuit, they issued what is called a consent decree. And in the consent decree, it said that if I agree to go away and be quiet and stop doing these procedures, uh, they will not file this lawsuit against me. 
But if I don't, they're going to file this lawsuit against me, and they're going to, you know, seek injunction in the courts and financial, you know, et cetera. Um, and I had a week to decide. It was like a legal warning. Like, uh -huh. we're going to sue you if you don't stop doing what you're doing. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And so the premise of the, the legal document is the stem cells inside you and me are a drug, and the government controls this. Um, and so uh, when I first got the notice from the attorneys, I had gone outside because I, I don't like the kids to worry too much, you know, mm -hmm. about my crazy life. Uh, so I was outside, and I started to cry, and my husband came running out. And I explained, you know, what was going on. And he said, um, you know, don't worry type of stuff, you know, very supportive. And I said, you know, with tears, y you know what I have to do. And he said, I know what you have to do. And it's okay, we're going we're gonna to do this. Um, so obviously I did not sign the consent decree. And so now I have been sued by the United States of America personally, uh, as well as the clinic. And uh, at the time, I didn't even know that that was a possibility. I had never heard of such a thing. Uh, obviously, my background is in engineering and science, uh, not law. So that was a whole new ballgame for me. Um, the challenge is th the financial side of that can be very challenging. You know, we have to pay the lawyers to defend against this lawsuit. Um, but I think what we're doing is so important. We are standing up for medical freedom and that patients have a right to use their own cells to heal their body. And that this is something that they should be able to consent with their practitioner to make a decision to do. And this is not something that the government should be involved in. The government does not regulate medical procedures. The government regulates drugs. And I am not a drug. And I'm going to stand up for that a hundred times over. I've seen enough patients get out of their wheelchair to know that I'm on the right side of history. And time will tell the truth. Kerry Jack, our VP of Operation, is, um, he wrote a book called The Happy Hustle. And I'm reading an advanced copy. And the page that uh, I ended on last night, he was, had us doing an exercise where you write down things that make you smile. Mm-hmm and people standing up against injustice mm. and for what they believe in, especially when it's a form of bullying, is something that makes me smile. Mm -hmm. And um, it fills me with gratitude that you're doing this. Mm. And there's a lot of people that support you and will also stand behind you. So thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. And look, I mean, it's, it, of course, it's a hard journey. And uh, I knew at the moment that I decided to stand up and do that, uh, that I would be criticized, um, which I was, you know, the media has gone after me. Um, and they've even called my children, um, gone after they, every time I leave the gym, I'm like carrying a yoga mat. The cameras are, would be chasing me. They went after my parents and I would have to say the hardest thing in all of this, uh, is actually the toll that it's taken on my parents. You know, they, they worry, you know, they're, they're mm. afraid. Um, and I said, mom, you know, it's okay. Like, okay, I have to undergo a little criticism. It's nothing compared to the suffering of people who have diseases who need our help. Mm -hmm. So every day I just have to remind myself of that, that we're doing the right thing. And, you know, I have been given the strength and the voice, so I must use it. I love it. Mm -hmm. where, where are things at right now with the litigation? And I mean, I, we're coming from a place where we didn't, at least when I was growing up, you we're taught not to question things. Right. And if someone was wearing a white coat or if they were in a position of authority, then you did what they said. Mm -hmm. And I think more of us are waking up to the fact that some of the, some of the groups that we had cons believed to be uh, acting in our best interest aren't necessarily. That's right. And mm -hmm. there's, the, the waters can get muddied mm -hmm. due to- um, Financial. Mm -hmm. financial for mm -hmm. financial reasons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where are things at now kind of catch us up to speed yeah so uh the first thing that happened is uh the judge who has been assigned and it is a federal case but we are in the florida courts and it's currently civil um in other words there's no criminal aspect of it it's civil um although the the lawyers have warned that, that they could take it criminal so they could come after me criminally um, and so, you know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll play out the worst case scenario um, just to kind of resolve it in my head. Be and okay so, with it. yes, yes. And so I played out the worst case scenario, which was I have to go to jail. And I said, well, that's okay. I was supposed to go there because those women needed my help and I will help them with yoga. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's all good. You're it was meant to be. Into shape. <laughs> 
by the end of it, they'll like vote me out. Like, please, we need a day off. It's vote her like, out. <laughs> orange is the new black, but <laughs> yeah. everyone's shredded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what happened is that the judge has actually mandated that the trial go to mediation first. Um, so we have a court date or it's not really a court, it's a mediation date set for February um, mediation to see if we can come up with a resolution without going to full trial. Um, so if we can't come to resolution with the FDA, um, and the FDA is the client and the lawyers are the Department of Justice, uh, if we can't, then it, it goes to trial. Um, so as long as I can continue to have the, the financial, or the company can continue to have the financial wherewithal to fight, I will. Um, so that's certainly the most challenging piece of this puzzle, uh, being able to continue to do that. Now, in the meantime, um, we are still doing procedures in our clinic. Um, so we're helping patients every day. We've treated more than 10,000 patients, and the safety profile is amazing. So um, we published the world's largest safety paper, uh, and um, the, the, the number of adverse events are, are very, very low uh, with complete resolution. So, you know, we're, we're very encouraged by the outcomes that we've seen. Mm -hmm. So as a third party observer to this situation, it seems like it's incredibly safe. You're getting great results. Is the reason you anticipate mm -hmm. that you're a threat to pharmaceutical revenues, and if they're able to stop it now before stem cells gain momentum, mm -hmm. it may delay the inevitable? Or what, what's your thought process and why this is taking place? Yeah, I mean, I do think so. I think any time you have um, financial gains, uh, it, it starts to muddy the water. Mm -hmm. And the challenge is that pharmaceutical companies have nothing to bottle and sell. So if the technology to heal is inside you and you're walking into the office and you're working with your practitioner, tissue out, tissue in, and you're getting better, where does a pharmaceutical play in that? It doesn't. There's nothing for them to put in a bottle and sell off the shelf. So there's no opportunity for pharmaceuticals to make money there. And so when that's happening, pharmaceutical companies no longer have a vested interest in looking at the space or advancing the technology, and the majority of research is paid for by pharmaceutical companies. And it's because in the end they can bottle and sell something. So if the government says, this is a drug, it literally stops the field here in the United States because nobody will fund trials. Pharmaceutical companies will not. Now, the other thing that happened that I found very interesting is at the same time that the FDA began coming down on this space, coming down on this field, um, issuing guidance documents and then warning letters, et cetera, they fast-tracked Novartis's cell therapy product. So Novartis is a, a big pharmaceutical company, and their cell therapy product sells for half a million dollars per dose. So they can't have clinics like us selling $5,000 treatments uh, when the big pharma is trying to sell it at half a million. I would imagine that that half a million is also covered by insurance companies. It is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so look, I mean, you know, I hate to be like conspiracy theory, et cetera, but um, you know, we have to look at the financial side of health and how does it affect. The other thing is that patients are so savvy now. They are taking their health into their own hand. People they're know. taking to the internet. They're learning about things. They're reading books about their indication specifically. They oftentimes know more than their medical professional about their situation. Mm -hmm. um, and this is good. This is where we should be in our, our period of health. Take it into your own hand. If you don't care about your health, nobody else is going to. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very exciting time. There's so much... There's so much wisdom there and strategies for us to take control of our health and utilize things that allow our body to, to heal itself. Mm -hmm. um, and for anyone that may be listening to this and is perhaps in a place where I was 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I would encourage you to go back and, and research the Flexner report um, mm -hmm. and the industrialization of medicine and when things kind of took a shift, yep. and, um, and, and it explains a lot of the, the challenges today and why some of these things are happening. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. And we're, um, 
at the U.S. Stem Cell Clinic, you're doing something special for our listeners mm -hmm. that may want to experience some of these benefits themselves, yeah. right? Yeah. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? Yep, yep. So um, we've partnered with you to create a separate page where they can go and obtain discounts on stem cell treatments. Um, and then also, if they're interested in learning about the Biohacker Health Facility, so uh, this is called Biohackers Health and Fitness. Um, we have a lot of different equipment, machines, where we can help with cellular repair pair really getting kind of uh, on the inside out level uh, repairing from the inside out and uh, we have discounts for that as well so uh, anyone who's watching this who's interested uh, will provide the links for the landing pages so they can take advantage of those discounts um, and then the other thing I would like to encourage the, the listeners to do is to um, go to my Facebook page, which is Kristen Camella, comma, PhD. It's Kristen with an I. And also I have an Instagram page, Kristen Camella. Um, and just send me a note that says, keep fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, guys. And, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the cool things that you have here at Biohackers Health and Fitness in Weston. Um, but if you guys are interested in checking out the, you know, saving some money on stem cells and you want to experience this either because you've got some joint pain going on or you want to use it for anti-aging purposes or there's someone that you care about that's dealing with neurodegenerative disease, go to usstemcellclinic.com forward slash biohacks and we're going to have a deal there where you guys could save up to 500 bucks. Um, so again, that's usstemcellclinic.com forward slash biohacks. And then um, this place is amazing. Yeah. Like, I love what you guys have done here. Yeah. And you have everything from the ARX machine to the, the best pulse electromagnetic field machine in the world, mm -hmm. the Nano V. What brought this to fruition? Yeah. So, um, over the summer, you know, when it was just uh, kind of all coming to be you know, like the United States of America is after me, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's just, it's like a lot, it's a, it's a lot weighing down. And, um, so I was actually upstairs in the master bathroom it's at like our house. Not, it's actually like the United States is probably behind you. Right. It's more just, they're using that vernacular and it's a little misleading. <laughs> I, know. I know. So I, um, you know, I was in the bathroom and I just kind of broke down. Like I was, I was just crying and no one was in the room, but I was almost screaming like at God, like what do you want from me? What am I supposed to do? I'm helping people. Like, I don't get it. What do you want? You know? And I was like this close to just being like, I'm out. I can't, you know, like it's too much, my family. And this was when the, the media was really going after the family and, you know, and it was just like, at some point I was like, I don't know if I can do this. And um, the next morning I woke up and what popped into my head is, oh, I have to open Biohackers Health and Fitness. Like that's, I get it. Okay, I know, I know what I'm supposed to do. Um, and so, you know, then my husband and I took everything we have and we put it into opening this new facility. So it was just another way to help people achieve health because that's really what it is. Every morning I look in the mirror and I say, okay, who am I gonna help achieve health today? Um, and this was another way that I could do it. Uh, so this combined with the stem cell treatments, um, it, it just gave me the strength to keep going. Um, and I knew that I was on the right path and that I was doing the right thing. I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Um, and every day we help people. That's what it's about in the end. And I don't think that when I'm 120 that I'm gonna say, gosh, I wish I hadn't stood up to the United States of America. I'm sure going to be proud I did. I'm sure proud of you. I'm sure glad that you did. And, um, and guys, yeah, if you're listening, give Kristen some words of encouragement. And if you're in South Florida, you definitely need to come check out Biohackers Health and Fitness. They have uh, the Live O2 machine, so you can do exercise with oxygen training and go from like a high oxygen environment to a low oxygen environment while doing high intensity intervals. They've got the Vasper machine that uses cold and compression while doing uh, high intensity intervals and like, I mean, Carrie and I were doing that on Friday and just dying. And uh, I, I had already done a workout earlier that day and I was like, I'm 
I'm saying uncle uh, halfway <laughs> through. <laughs> Get carry out here. <laughs> um, but it's but it's amazing, especially for recovery too. The, the the technology you guys have brought in a lot of the best technology from around the world and made it where people can come access that. And instead of spending a thousand dollars a month on just the PMF machine that you have here mm -hmm. to lease it, they can come here at a tiny fraction of that and use it as much as they want. So it's really special. And um, we've put together a 20% off three month package for that. And um, we'll get you guys the details for that in the show notes. But if you want to come check out what they've got going on here at Biohackers Health and Fitness and, and save some money on it, it's a blast. And you feel amazing when you leave. We're going to take a quick minute to hear from our sponsors and then we'll be right back with the rapid fire round. And we're back. Are you up for some rapid fire questions? Let's do it. All right, awesome. Out of all of the tech and gear and gadgets that you guys have here, let's not include the yoga studio and the, the spin studio for right now. What's your favorite piece of biohacking equipment, if you can only have one? Okay, so my favorite biohack is definitely stem cells. My favorite equipment is the pulse. This thing is amazing. Um, so I, I've done many electromagnetic mats and you know, different equipment before. Pulse is next level. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that you, you know, actually feel it and you're addressing really the voltage of the cells. So when you start getting into um, disease or damaged tissue, the voltage has gone too low. So we're really kind of like jump-starting that electrical grid inside our body. And we are such a complex electrical grid. Pulse is a game changer. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I, I have the OnDemed machine and then I, I tested the PMF120 and the Pulse XL is like a combination of the two on steroids. And it's, it's really exciting that so many people have taken an interest in this and, and applied their passion to create technology that can make people's lives better. Mm -hmm. um, so that's great. And then if you mentioned stem cells, what specific stem cell procedure and what type of stem cells? So we've got embryonic, umbilical, mesenchymal, adipose, stuff from the bone marrow. What, would, what type of stem cells would you get and how would you apply it? Yep, so uh, our preference is certainly to get stem cells from fat. Um, the reason being it's very simple to take from the body. It can be done in an outpatient procedure and you get much higher amounts. Um, it's, it's a little bit more challenging to tap the bone and do a bone marrow draw and you cannot anesthetize the bone so it tends to be more painful. And then you get much lower counts of stem cells, so fat hands down. I've actually never had my bone marrow tapped and I would not let someone tap my bone marrow. Uh, the, the reason is that once you tap the bone marrow, it's very taxing on the immune system, so your immune system has to work very hard to replenish it. Taking a small sample of fat is, is very easy to do. I actually did a conference call while I was getting my fat removed. Mm -hmm. You're also a pretty gangster. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> what is your favorite supplement? Uh, oh, so I'm a little bit of a minimalist when it comes to my supplements, and I also will go down in the morning and kind of open the cabinet and be like, mm, I feel like, and then take whatever I feel like that day. Bring an intuitive aspect <laughs> yes, to your I selection do. as well. <laughs> um, and I think that your body sometimes will tell you if you just allow it, you know, and you'll just feel yourself gravitate totally towards agree. something. Um, so I like D3. Um, but that's more like if I haven't been getting a good dose of sun, you know, get myself out there. No SPF. Stop wearing that stuff. Get out there. Take it in. Midday sun exposure. Love it. Yeah, just don't burn. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, sometimes I'll take nitric oxide. Uh, so that's if I haven't been eating enough beets or spinach, then I'll be like, mm, Do you I do the take. lozenges or the like L-arginine? Yeah, there's a, a, a product, too. Neo 40. is oh, yeah. not bad. Yeah, yeah a guy good. out of Texas yeah. uh, made that one. Um, I'll also do, uh, like the algae, the energy bits. I like mm -hmm. those. Those are fun. Sure um, is. pulse makes uh, a supplement that goes with their machine. So you can take a little shot of that prior to getting on. That's not bad. So sometimes I'll do that. Um, and let's see. Oh, I like restore for gut mm, health. Right. If I'm going to eat, <laughs> give us a yes, shot of that. If I'm going to eat out at a restaurant mm -hmm. and I know that I'm not going to get organic, clean or grass fed beef, uh, then I'll do a shot of restore, you know, gut protection. 
Uh, this this was hilarious. Carrie and I were going to grab some food as we were leaving Biohackers Health and Fitness, and uh, Kristen was like, "Oh, before you go to a restaurant, take a shot of Restore." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I don't have any on me." And she goes, "I carry some at all times." So Dr. Zach Bush, Kristen Cavella's rep and Restore hardcore. She gave Carrie and I each a cap of it before we left to go grab food. So that was great. Um, and then my favorite is um, Prime My Body hemp oil. Um, so I'll do that every day. Yeah, that was life altering. Um, that's Dr. Shade's product. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. I haven't tried that. So he has Quicksilver, or you could do the Prime My Body. Um, those are both his company. Um, so I do the Prime My Body. Uh, and so this is how much I love that. Um, I'm actually selling it half price here, which is lower than my cost. I know I got yelled at by like the people who run the show here. And they said, you know, what are you crazy? I said, no, I want everyone to try it. They're going to love it. So if I just, you know, make it so For inexpensive. For like their first bottle, right? Yeah, yeah, right. they Not gotta right. do it. Okay. And then they're just gonna love it. They'll see how great it is. <laughs> oh, that's great. And that, that's a hemp-based product? Uh-huh. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So cool. what's unique about his is he has little nano lipids, so like fat particles, so it helps to carry to the brain. So you get much better absorption of the CBD. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm -hmm. We were actually just at uh, Veritas Farms, who's coming on to, to sponsor the Biohacking Secrets show, and we were checking out their headquarters. And you know, our we're playing the long game, and we love companies that are doing things in terms of uh, that are sustainable and good for the planet as well. And it's all organic and full spectrum, uh, full spectrum hemp based CBD. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you know, check out Prime My Body too. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, what have you eaten today? Mm, okay, so uh, I had, I fasted, uh, so I had two cups of coffee black in the morning, um, and then I fasted until about noon or 12.30ish, uh, and I had spinach, raw spinach, arugula, uh, cauliflower, avocado, um, and then uh, some olive oil and pink Himalayan salt. Uh -huh. Sounds delicious. <laughs> um, did you so just olive oil or did you do olive oil and something else? No, just olive oil. Nice, uh -huh. all right, good, uh -huh. good. Um, favorite book that you've ever read? Oh, I'm reading this book right now that's talking about kind of the body as an electrical grid, and the name of it is The Body Electric. No, mm. uh, so Healing good. is Voltage. No, but that's a good book too. Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. Jerry Tennant, Jerry Tennant, yeah. Um, and I just watched a podcast with him. Amazing. And then, you know, worried about the wisdom teeth. Mm. What are you yeah. supposed to do? Yeah. I know. No, thanks. I need that circuit breaker. Right. Can I get mine back? <laughs> <laughs> we may, we may need to do a, a follow up episode to talk yeah. about. But anyway, this too. book talks about kind of, uh, bringing acupuncture together with Western medicine and the fascia is this complex electrical grid and that Western uh, medicine doesn't necessarily give it acknowledgement mm -hmm. you know and that this is really where eastern medicine comes in and i think there's an opportunity to bring those two things together and sometimes we miss that picture the, i mean look the other thing is it, it's so important to to gain your health insights from many sources mm -hmm. you know your doctor's not the only person who knows about health you know look outside of that mm -hmm. yeah it, the best results usually come when someone has a, a team uh, around them mm -hmm. and um and, and it's not just one physician and you're taking that, at, at that advice at face value and right. take it or leave it. Yeah. Um, what's the favorite piece, what's your favorite piece of advice you've ever gotten? Oh, for me? Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't given to me directly, I just saw it on the news. Elon Musk said, this is probably just a video game. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's great. Next time I get stressed out, this is probably just a video game. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the ride. Yeah. His, his interview on Rogan was pretty interesting. It was surrounding yes. like AI. Yeah. A, a, little, a little bit cryptic, but at the same right. time probably accurate. Right. And he may be the smartest human that's ever lived. Yeah. Now the other thing I like to do is, will this matter when I'm 90? Mm. The answer is very rarely yes. Yeah. Or yeah. even like, will this matter in a year or 10 right. years? It almost yeah. always no. Right. Yeah. So don't let the little things stress you out. Right. I love it. I love it. Well, Dr. Kristen Kamala, this has been amazing. I've had a blast and I, uh, I, I commend you and support you and, and um, I stand behind you mm -hmm. and anyone listening that also appreciates the work that, that 
Dr. Kamel is doing, please give her words of encouragement. Send her a DM on Instagram or Facebook. Um, it's probably a perfect time for you to let us know where, where's the best, where are the best places for people to stay up to date with the things you're working on. And then I'll, uh, I'll give the websites again for the U.S. Stem Cell Clinic. And yeah, definitely on, and on my social notes. media accounts. I try to post and anything that's happening um, um, and certainly any updates on the court case. So I'll, I'll put it there. Cool. Sure, share with us your Insta one more time. and It's Kristen Camella, Kristen with an I. And then Facebook is Kristen Camella, comma, PhD. Beautiful. And then if you guys want to check out usstemcellclinic.com forward slash biohacks, we've got $500 off uh, stem cell treatments. And then... Biohackers Health and Fitness, where we are recording this episode in Weston. Save 20% off any three-month package. Check it out. You guys are going to love it. We're going to go play with some of the, some of the gear and gadgets now and biohack our energy. Um, love what you guys are doing. Thank you so Thank much. You.